Joining us now from Capitol Hill, Republican senator from South Dakota and member of the Budget and Finance Committees, and he's a chair breaker. He broke a chair broke with his chair. bare South I Dakota hands. I have to say, it was more impressive than that plastic fork. Just a little bit. <laughs> He also, had, he also had buffalo that uh, mounted on his wall that he yes. strangled with his bare Staring hands. Staring at me. And then he broke his chair like the Incredible Hulk. He just was, like this. He was like, sometimes this death <gasps> makes me so angry. He was sitting there and he just squeezes. And it broke. And the chair breaks and his bare hands. How do you hands. do that, Senator? Very impressive. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> you, what, you guys, what, you guys don't, what you guys don't realize, Mika, is that uh, they designed Furniture Week around here to make senators feel more powerful. Oh, well, that so works. That's, 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 <laughs> that works. Well, John Thune, how are you feeling this morning? Uh, we had Tom Coburn on, our Mr. Sunshine, as we like to call him around the morning show set, <laughs> saying that air. absolutely nothing good came out of this deal. Uh, how are you feeling, and will this pass the Senate today? It, it will, Joe, and I noticed that Coburn was uh, more upbeat and sunny than he normally is this morning. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yes. it, it's, it, it will it will pass the Senate, and, and I have you know I have a lot of heartburn over uh, elements in this too. But I think it comes back to the question you posed earlier, and that is, if not this, what? And I think it's important not to oversell this because this is a start. This is certainly not a solution to the challenges that we face. But as you know from having been here, so much of what happened happens in Washington is directional and when you were here and I was here and Harold Ford were here was here years ago it was the last time I remember when we were actually trying to turn the ship around and actually roll back the size of government so this stuff is all it's it's directional and it's a it's yeah. a baby step but I think that's what you have to look at that's it. a great way to look at it make uh, it directional yeah baby step uh, <laughs> yeah. Senator, uh, why is it just a baby step? I mean, why couldn't we have done better here? And I personally think it's the Tea Party, and I think it's, you know, what some do, of these What do you mean? They're trying to move us further no, in this direction. This is such a baby step, and we all know that. And if baby you listen step. to Senator Tom Coburn, it's a nothing step. The baby fell down on its butt. Okay? <laughs> real, real um, speak? So Come tell on. me why it's just a baby step. I think that uh, it has a lot to do with the forces that are at work here. I mean, remember, this is a president who, in his budget sub this year, submitted a budget that increased spending by 55 percent, that literally doubled the debt, the gross debt, to $27 trillion at the end of the decade and had $1.6 trillion in tax increases in there. Uh, I think this is moving the ball in the right direction. It doesn't include taxes. It does have spending cuts. It's got a vote on a balanced budget amendment. So there are lots of things in here, I think, that commend it. Now, if you're somebody who wants to see a bigger, more robust solution, then yes, you're going to be disappointed. And if you're somebody like me who doesn't like the whole joint committee process and, and doesn't like the triggers, uh, you're probably going to be disappointed. But I think, again, you have to look at these things based upon the circumstances that we have. I think our leaders, Speaker Boehner, uh, Senator McConnell, against a stacked deck, uh, got the best possible deal they could get. What was the stacked deck? What was the well, problem? again, it's, I think you've got a liberal president and a left of center uh, Senate, and those are two forces right now that are working against cutting spending, working against reducing the size of government, and to, to the extent that you can get anything done in that atmosphere, I think that's a, that's a step forward. I mean, Willie, you have, you have a Senate that hasn't put out a budget. How many days has it been, Senator, since the Senate Democrats who run the place have put out a budget? 825. So 825 days, Willie, without the Senate putting out a budget. Republicans put out a budget. The Democrats then use that to run against candidates to beat them over the head. I, would, I think it is fair to say that as far as reducing spending this week, not this decade, because Republicans have been terrible, but certainly if we're taking baby steps, it's not because Republicans didn't want to go further on cuts. They wanted to go further, and the Democrats didn't want to put anything out that they then could be attacked on. Senator, uh, it's Willie Geist. I want to ask you the same question I asked Tom Coburn a few minutes ago, which is that we had this moment of national crisis, if you will, this August 2nd deadline looming. The stakes were as high as they could possibly be, and yet we still didn't get something huge. We never got to that grand bargain that had been so talked about over the last several months. Do you see a circumstance within the United States Congress, within the government, where we could actually have a conversation about entitlements on one side and raising revenue on the other? Are we capable of that conversation within our political system? 
it, it, it would appear based upon the discussions in the last few weeks, at least right now, that would be tough, Willie. But I think the big picture here, everybody says, what's the big picture? The big picture is this is going to get litigated over the next 15 months before the uh, 12 election. And I think this is going to be the focus of people's, uh, the debate in this country, the political de debate and discourse. It's going to be debt. It's going to be spending. It's going to be jobs. It's going to be the economy. And the grand bargain, I think, was in, in some ways you could argue that the Joint Committee is sort of a down payment on the grand bargain, assuming it can come to any conclusions. But we have to do entitlement reform. We've got to do tax reform. Those, those. I mean, if we don't fix those problems, all we're doing is just nipping around the edges of this, and we can't afford to do that. The problem is too big. Hmm. John Hellman. Senator, I, I'm, I'm, you were uh, briefly considered for a while uh, running for president this year. Uh, and I have a question to ask you about the, your, your party, party colleagues who decided to run. It seems strange to me and to some others that the Republican presidential candidates were non-players in this debate. They were, they were absent largely. They didn't have much influence on the debate. In many cases, they didn't say anything. Um, can you explain why that is and whether it was helpful for them to be such non-players or whether it was harmful to the process? I think if you're a presidential candidate, John, and of course you've covered them and, and written books about them, uh, you don't want to get immersed into the, the weeds of what's going on in Washington. I think Washington is viewed as the problem. Now, clearly, you have to have a solution and a vision for the future of this country, but I think what the presidential candidates are focused on, and really should be, is jobs and the economy. Now, at some point, you're going to have to lay out what you would do about spending and debt, but my guess is that right now they're trying to stay singularly focused on the issue that they think is the most important to the people of this country, and I think they're right, and that is uh, jobs and the economy. Nicole Wallace. Uh, Senator, if I could just follow up on that. Based on what you did see and hear from the campaign trail, <laughs> who comported themselves in a way that suggests they do a good job? Get on, get ask, ask him whether Mitt Romney was well, reckless and I mean, unhelpful. Congressman, he just come out Congressman and ask Paul had the first, was the first candidate to have a position. I mean, did any of them impress you or, or, or leave any smoke signals that suggested that in a year and a half they'd be best suited to take on the problem of the debt and the economy? Well, I think that in judging, and I haven't seen what all the candidates have said about this so far, but I think what the American people and probably what Republican voters are going to be looking for is, one, somebody who is decisive, somebody, which I think is in direct contrast to this president, somebody that will provide leadership and somebody that will lay out a vision about how to get the economy back on track. And, you know, their reaction to this particular episode of what's happening here in Washington is sort of a, uh, you know, that's a, a side note, a footnote to all this. But in the end, and I think that's what the Republican nominee is going to have to do to attract Republican voters to their cause here in the country and ultimately to win the general election. You support, hey, John, you supporting anybody yet? I'm not, I'm not anybody's uh, bandwagon just yet, Joe. Did, did Mitt Romney coming out? I'm waiting, yes. I'm waiting, for, I'm waiting for you to announce. Oh, well. Yes, yes, well, very good. Okay, there you go. well, you just sit there and break chairs for a while. And give me a while. <laughs> so, 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 John, would it make you, and I'm not making trouble here. I just, you right. know. Yeah, you are. Yeah, no, no I I'm, I'm really not making trouble here. You know me. I was the hothead in Congress. I was the guy always pushing for more cuts. Uh, but you get to a point where you've got to stop the economy from going over the cliff. When we have 9.2% unemployment, I'm just really disappointed that Mitt Romney decided to stay out of this debate that you guys have to stay in the middle of, and then jumped in at the last second to say you'd vote against it. Was that helpful, John, do you think? Uh, I don't think at this point it's probably particularly helpful when you're trying to solve a, a problem like this to have a lot of uh, the outside voices um, you know, taking a position that might be counter to what we're trying to get done here. But look, it, candidates have their own opinions. They have their own campaigns. They have to decide what they think is the most effective message for them to deliver to the American people and, in this case, to the Republican electorate. So I, I'm not going to fault him or anybody else for things that they've said about this. But when you're in here in the trenches trying to govern under a very difficult set of circumstances, you want to get the best outcome you can. And, and you mentioned it early on. You said it, I think, all morning on the show, Joe, and that is, if you're not going to be for this, what is the alternative to default? And I think that's the question that most people across the country uh, want their po politicians and elected leaders to answer. So, so there you go. You got um, John Thurn. He is a political superstar, yes, but also a little known fact. Yeah. South Dakota strongman champion, yes. 1978 <laughs> he has a belt. to 1990. Yeah. Big so, belt right Senator, next to the Buffalo. Senator, who did you see in the gym this morning? It's Was Schumer there? 
Yeah. Schumer was Schumer was, was coming grumpy? in, Mika. Uh -huh. as, well, he was. I, he seemed pretty upbeat too, you know. So. Wow. Um, okay. I think he's anxious to get this this bolt behind us, just like a lot of us. There are, are rumors <laughs> he gets grumpy in the gym and wants the volume turned up and the volume turned down. You know, <laughs> <Okay>. whatever. <laughs> I yeah. will comment on that. You know, what stay, what happens in the gym stays in the gym. Stays in the gym. <laughs> All right. Hey, John. Thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate thank it. You, Good Senator. luck. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Mika.